Instagram.com. Okay, we've got a case here. We've got a 55-year-old male who presents the emergency room with chest pressure for two hours, history of hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes type 2, and obesity. And he's got a family history of coronary artery disease. So you go ahead and get an EKG on the patient. And this is what you receive. So you decide to go through methodically and figure out exactly what it is that's going on on this EKG. So the first thing that we do, as you may recall, is rate, rhythm, and axis. So what is the rate? And remember for the rate, we look over the entire picture. We find an area that looks fairly regular. And I think this is probably a good point as any. And we see there's two points that are cycling and we count the number of boxes. So we go here for the number of boxes, we go one box, two boxes, and just almost three boxes. So next what we do is we take the number of boxes and we put it into our equation. And you will know that if it is one box, it equals 300 beats per minute. If it is two, it's 150. If it is three, it's 100. If it is four, it is 75. If it is five, it is equal to 60. So we simply take the number of boxes and we divide it into 300 and that will give us the rate. And so since looking at this, it's slightly shorter than three boxes, the rate is gonna be slightly higher than 100 beats per minute, which sounds reasonable in this patient. So rate is over 100 beats per minute. The next thing that we have to look at is rhythm. And for that, we are going to look at the QRS complexes. And right before it, we're gonna look for P waves. And the best place to look for P waves is in lead two, because that's looking at the right atrium. And you can see P waves there preceding each QRS complex. Here's a rhythm strip, which is almost always lead two. And you can see here clearly that we have P waves before each QRS complex. So we're dealing with a sinus rhythm, and since this is greater than 100, this is sinus tachycardia. So the next thing that we wanna do is look at axis, and we wanna see where's the major ventricular axis in this situation when we have contraction. So let's go through the leads. Lead one is gonna be going in this direction. Lead AVR is gonna be going to the right, and so it's gonna be going up in this direction. AVL is gonna be going up in this direction. Lead two here is going to be in this direction. Lead three is going to be in this direction. And of course, AVF is down in this direction. And so what you're trying to do here is look at the major extremes. So which ones have the highest amplitude and which ones have the most extreme amplitude. And that'll tell you generally what direction things are going in. And of course, they should be isoelectric or have the lowest amplitude in the perpendicular direction. The other way of looking at it is just going to the X and Y axis, which is lead one here, and Y would be here in AVF. So if we're looking here in this direction, we see that the amplitudes are very low. So the QRS complexes are very low. And so that tells us that the axis is gonna be perpendicular to lead one. Whereas if we look at AVF, we see that there is a definite negative amplitude here, which tells us that it's gonna be going the opposite direction of AVF. So generally, just looking at one and AVF, you can tell that the axis is gonna be going generally in the up direction. So which up direction is that going to be? It could be here two, the opposite of two or the opposite of three. So when we look at two and three, we can see here that they're both high in negative amplitude, but two seems to be the greatest in terms of negative amplitude. And so the direction that we would see in this situation is probably gonna be somewhere opposite to lead to. So somewhere in that range. And that would make sense in terms of axis. So we've gone through rate, we've gone through rhythm, and we've gone through axis. Now we've kind of been teasing you with this because obviously the biggest issues that we can see here clearly in this patient is not rate rhythm axis issues, but it's this thing. It's the ST segment elevation that we're seeing, especially here in AVL. We're seeing it in lead V4. We're seeing it in lead V2. 
V3 as well. And then the key point here is that we're seeing reciprocal ST segment depression in lead Roman numeral three and in AVF. So this is a disaster. This is a ST segment elevation myocardial infarction that is evolving in somebody with high risk factors. So the question is, is what do we do with this? Well, join us in our next video while we talk about what is the management of somebody with an ST segment elevation MI that comes in, because you need to know that before they come in because it's very nerve wracking. In the meantime, you wanna be able to recognize these things on EKG. And I want to implore you to visit medcram.com where we have an outstanding EKG class that goes through methodically over these EKGs. And so you will not miss these very important signs that you see on EKG. Thanks for joining us.